Hello pupils, you remembered last week I told you, I sent you a picture whereby you will have, you were told to write these columns in your copybook. We were dealing with the plural form, isn't it? Here we are, the plural form. Here in the first column we have the singular, when it means singular, we mean that there is only one and when there are the word plural, which means there are more than one, they can have two, three, four, even five. Let's look at the first word here, which is a noun, the tree, when, there, when it is in the plural form, we just add an S, a S with it, become trees, the same thing for girl, become girls. Car become cars, C-A-R-S. Bicycle become bicycles in the plural form. What have we do? What have we done here? We just add a S. Okay, now let's move on to nouns. Let's read it. Four nouns ending in S, X, O, C, H, and S, H. I repeat. Four nouns ending in S, X, O, C, H, and S, H. They take E, S in the plural form. Let's have, let's look at some examples. We have the word bus. The word bus ends in S, okay? Therefore, when there are more than one, let's say three, we say three buses. B U S E S. Let's look at the word class. The word class also ends with a S. It becomes classes. C L A S S E S. Don't forget you have to add E S because the word class ends with S. We have the word fox. The word fox ends in X. Fox will become foxes. Here also, we add ex because the word fox ends in x. The word box become boxes. Potato, which ends in o, become potatoes. P o t a t o e s. It ends with o. We have to add es in the plural. Form the word tomato. Okay, the word tomato become tomatoes. Church, the word church ends with ch. We add es. Church become churches. What about the word bench, which ends with ch? It become benches. B e n c h e s. Let's look at the word dish. The word dish become dishes, D-I-S-H-E-S. -E and the word bush become bushes, B-U-S-H-E-S. -E As you can see here, the word dish ends in S-H. Same for the word bush, which ends with S-H. Now let's continue for today's class. Okay, for today's class, you will have to write this one in your copybook. I did send you the picture. Four nouns ending in Y. I repeat. Four nouns ending in Y. And if just before the Y there is a vowel, and if just before the Y there is a vowel, here are the vowels. A. E I O U. Here are the vowels. Vowels A E I O U. We just add a S with the nouns. We just add a S with the nouns. Let's have an example here. We have the word key. The word key ends in E Y. E is a vowel. What do we do in the plural form? We just add a S. Key become keys, K-E-Y-S. Let's look at the word B. The word B ends in a Y. A is a vowel. A is before the letter Y. What do we do? We just add A-S, B-A-Y-S for base. 
What about toy? The word toy ends with O-Y. O is found just before the Y. The Y is the last letter of the word toy. O is a vowel, you remember. You did it in grade 2. A, E, I, O, U are vowels. And what do we do in the plural form? We just add a S with toy. We become toys, T-O-Y-S. Let's read this one now. But, but the four nouns ending in Y. And if just before the Y, I repeat, but four nouns ending in Y. And if just before the Y, there is a consonant. It is not a vowel here. Other words in the English alphabets are known as consonants. Some are consonants. Some of vowels, we did look at the vowels, A, E, I, O, U, the other words, that is B, C, F, K, L, M, P, are known as consonants. We remove the Y, as you can see, we remove the Y and we put I, E, S. Example, lady become ladies. We remove the Y because before the letter Y, we have D. D is a consonant. We remove the Y. We put I, E, S, become ladies, L, A, D, I, E, S. What about the word fly? The word fly ends with Y, but just before the Y, there is a letter L, consonant. L is a consonant. What do we do? We remove the Y. We put I, E, S. What about the word butterfly? The word butterfly ends with a Y and just before the Y there is L. L is a consonant. What do we do? We remove the Y. We put I, E, S. It becomes butterflies. B-U-T-T-E-R-F-L-I-E-E-S. Now we move on page 55 in your English book, okay? Let's read, I learn, plural, I-E-S. Sometimes we add I-E-S to form the plural of some words. Look at the example and then write the plural of the words below. We have an example has been given to you, which is the word baby, which become babies, isn't it? Baby become babies. As you can see, baby ends with a Y, isn't it? And just before the Y, we have the letter B. Just before the Y, we have the letter B, which is a consonant. As I told you, when we have a consonant, before the letter Y, we have to remove the letter Y and we put I-E-S. That's what has been written here. B-A-B-I-E-S. Baby become babies. What about the letter fly? The letter fly ends with Y. Just before the Y, we are L. L is a consonant. What do we do, children? Of course, we remove the Y. We put I-E-S. I told you that if there is a consonant before Y, we remove the Y. We put I-E-S. Fly become flies. You continue the other at your on your own at your place. This will be your homework. I write the words in the correct order to make sentences. Do you remember learning how to use N in grade 2? Help me to do this activity. I, I don't know whether you remember that the word N is a conjunction. Okay, it is a conjunction and it functions. N is used, uh, you have to write it in your book. And is used to link two 
words or two sentences okay I repeat and the word n which is a conjunction is used to link two words or two sentences I will do the first one for you and you will have to do these two on your own Sonia our friends Wendy and these words are in the jumble form you will have to write a correct sentence by using Sonia our friends Wendy and the word N do you have any idea children what can I write to make it a proper sentence indeed I can write Sonia and Wendy are friends. I repeat, Sonia and Wendy are friends. As you can see here, the word and, which is a conjunction, is used to link Sonia and Wendy because they are two different persons and we are telling you that they are friends okay you will have to do these two on your on your own now we move to the ss e, -E book we move to page on page 56 we leave the other pages when we will meet next week we will discuss about it okay let's have a look on page 56 okay completing my family tree now you are well versed with it we discuss about it about grandmother and grandfather about father and mother about your brother and your sister fill in the blanks with the correct word we have the word mother okay you will have to uh, to choose where will you put the word mother on the blanks will it be here will it be here will it be here or oh, here or oh, here or oh, here the word mother in French we say mama we have the word brother you will have to choose where to put the word brother in French we say frère then you have the word grandmother which we say in French grand-mère We have the word sister, isn't it? The word sister in French we say sir. You will have to choose. If you are me, if me is here, you will have to look for the correct drawing to link with the word sister. You have the word father. En français, we say père ou papa. And the word grandfather, you know it is grand père in in French okay let's look at the word we have mother mother brother brother you can repeat these words grandmother grandmother sister sister father father and grandfather grandfather you will have to choose and you will complete this drawing let's move on page 57 now okay observe the drawings on page 56 this is our drawings and complete the sentences given below there are members in my family there are members in my family you will have to count the number of people in your family let's count one two three four five six and seven we are referring to page 56 eh? it's not about your own family here you are being told to refer to page 56 as you can see you can write the word seven here there are seven members in my family 
The oldest members in my family are my m and m. When we are referring to the word oldest, in French we will say plus vieux. Okay, the oldest members of my family are my. Uh, is your father the oldest member or your mom? I think you have seen that it is your grandfather and your grandmother. Therefore, you will have to complete here with the word grandfather and here with the word grandmother. Okay, the youngest member in my family is my, the youngest member is my, in my family is my. Here you will have um, a, a, a great choice because we never know whether it is a brother or the sister or me. It's up to you. You can put anyone you want. You can put the brother, you can put me, you can put uh, sister, but you can't put me because there's a word my. Will it be brother or sister? Okay, it's up to you. On va faire une classe aussi de français. Okay, alors vous allez ouvrir votre livre à la page 51. Okay, dans votre livre de français. Je lis le texte. Hector sait aboyer. Hector ne sait pas aboyer. Nous avons deux phrases. Nous avons la phrase A qui nous dit que Hector sait aboyer, tandis que la phrase B me dit Hector ne sait pas aboyer. Lis les phrases, on a fini de lire. Est-ce que les deux phrases disent la même chose? Je crois que vous avez vu que les deux phrases ne disent pas la même chose. Dans, un, dans, un, dans la phrase A, nous avons entendu que Hector sait aboyer. Hector, ça peut être un chien. Et dans la phrase B, on a vu que Hector ne sait pas. Il y a deux mots qui sont en plus. Il y a le mot « ne » et le mot « pas ». Comment le sais-tu On va voir, on va analyser. La phrase « a »,« Hector s'est aboyé » est une phrase affirmative. On peut aussi dire une phrase déclarative. C'est la même chose. Alors, si on dit une phrase affirmative, si on va dire une phrase déclarative, elle donne une information à propos d'Hector. Elle donne une information à propos d'Hector. Et vous allez voir que dans la phrase affirmative, vous avez vu, Hector s'est aboyé, il n'y a pas le mot « ne » et « pas », n'est-ce pas? On va passer à la phrase B. Hector ne s'est pas aboyé. La phrase B est une phrase négative. Elle dit le contraire de cette information. On utilise « ne » et « pas ». Vous avez vu, il y a le mot « ne » et « pas » pour indiquer cette différence. Devant une voyelle, « ne » devient un apostrophe. Devant une voyelle, « ne » devient un apostrophe. Exemple, « il n'a pas faim ». Alors, quelles sont les voyelles pour le français, vous allez ajouter ça dans votre livre, il y a A, E, I, O, U et Y. Exceptionnellement, en français, il y a l'alphabet Y. Je répète, les voyelles sont A, E, I, O, U, Y. Et on t'a dit ici que si jamais le nœud est mis devant une voyelle, le nœud devient un N apostrophe. Pourquoi parce que deux voyelles ne veulent pas juxtaposer. Par exemple, je peux dire « ne aval », ça ne se dit pas. Il y a une voyelle ici, une voyelle ici. Alors, qu'est-ce que je vais faire Je vais enlever le « e », je vais mettre « apostrophe » pour que cela devienne « naval ». D'accord Il faut mettre deux voyelles en juxtaposition. Autre chose, il faut savoir où ça on met le « ne » et le « pas ». Le nœud est mis, est mis devant le verbe, le mot c'est C, C est un verbe et pas se met après le verbe. Le nœud est mis devant le verbe et le pas après le verbe. Allons lire ce petit texte, ce petit texte. Je trouve des phrases négatives, il faut identifier les phrases négatives. Hector est un petit chien. 
Il ne s'est pas aboyé. Un jour, il arrive dans un village où, vient beaucoup, où vivent beaucoup de chiens. Très vite, il constate qu'Hector n'aboie pas. « Est-ce que tu sais miauler ?» lui demande un chien. « Non, je ne sais pas miauler. Je ne suis pas un chat, » répond Hector. « Est-ce que tu sais rugir ?» lui demande un autre. « Non, je ne sais pas rugir. Je ne suis pas un lion, » dit Hector. « Mais je sais chanter, » ajoute Hector timidement. « Ah !» s'exclament les chiens avec surprise. « Depuis ce jour, Hector est devenu le chanteur du village. » Je vais redire le, le texte. « Hector est un petit chien. » Vous pouvez lire en même temps que moi. « Il ne sait pas aboyer. » Un jour, il arrive dans un village où vivent beaucoup de chiens. Très vite, il constate qu'Hector n'aboie pas. « Est-ce que tu sais miauler ?» lui demande un chien. « Non, je ne sais pas miauler. Je ne suis pas un chat, » répond Hector. « Est-ce que tu sais rugir ?» lui demande un autre. « Non, je ne sais pas rugir. Je ne suis pas un lion, » dit Hector. « Mais je sais chanter, » ajoute Hector timidement. « Ah !» s'exclament les chiens avec surprise. « Depuis ce jour, Hector est devenu le chanteur du village. » Ok, alors moi, je vais voir qu'est-ce qu'on me demande ici. « Trouve des phrases négatives dans le texte. Et recopilé. D'accord? Il ne sait pas aboyer. C'est un exemple d'une phrase négative. Une autre phrase qu'on peut voir dans le texte qui a la forme négative. Alors, je constate dans cette phrase, il y a très vite, il constate qu'Hector n'aboie pas. Pas. Ça, c'est une phrase négative parce qu'on a le N apostrophe devant le verbe et le pas. Alors, je peux écrire un des, un des réponses. Hector n'aboie pas. D'accord? À vous de chercher d'autres phrases qui, tont, qui sont à la à forme négative et de les mettre ici. Correct? Ça sera votre... Devoir. Vous n'allez pas faire la deuxième part. Parti.